Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial. We haven't done one of these for a while, but going through all the comments that you guys have been leaving on some of my videos, which is all greatly appreciated. A lot of you asking how I do the templates on my tutorials. So this is the arm outlines, um, the other ones that I tend to use are legs and chest. I'm gonna go through a few of them today just to show you exactly what I do. It's really simple, really easy, but it is gonna make your life that much faster and more efficient when designing for clients. So with all that being said, Make sure to click the like button, subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed, but let's jump straight into it. Start it up. So first thing you're going to want to do is open up Procreate. Um, so I've already got an A4 canvas set up ready to go. So. If you've checked out some of my previous tutorial videos, you'll know that I do all of my designing on Procreate on A4, mainly because my print is A4, um, but also it means I know exactly what size things are gonna come out um, when I resize them on A4 sheet. Visually, I can think about what that's gonna be like when it's printed, and nine times out of 10, I can get my designs pretty much bang on the size that I want for my clients. To do the templates, these are really, really straight and simple, uh, masked overlay, uh, whatever you really wanna call it. The first thing that I do when I'm making these templates, which once I've done, I just save them out and then I just drag them into any file. So once you've done one, uh, that's all you're ever gonna need to do. Uh, to make your first initial one, uh, I download a couple of images from uh, Google, so nothing too wild. So you go uh, insert photo. I've already got these put into a folder. Uh, I've got a chest and just a really standard arm. Uh, these are gonna give me a nice sort of outline for a chest piece or a standard arm piece. So we'll just drag the arm in. Again, it's not important which arm you choose uh, or how it sort of sits. It's entirely up to you. For me, it's just about creating that space uh, and that shape to, uh, to give you that template to work with. Um, I'm just gonna resize this. So I'm just gonna grab these edges uh, and just drag it out. I wanna try and get it as big as I can on the A4 sheet. Obviously an arm is a lot bigger than A4, so anything you design on this template, you are gonna have to blow up, but it just gives you a good idea of the, as to the composition uh, and how you're gonna design the piece for the client. Procreate's changed a little bit since from my earlier tutorial. Some of the updates have uh, adjusted a few different bits and bobs. Um, nothing too wild, but um, this will be an up-to-date tutorial with where to click and what to press, etc. So the little green button here, if you just click that and drag that over, we can just rotate that round just so we can get it to sit sort of long ways on the A4 sheet. It's gonna give us a bigger canvas to work with um, and it means we're not gonna be doing a little tiny template. Just pinch to resize the canvas just so we can drag that fully out to fill pretty much the whole of the A4 sheet. Now the resolution isn't great, but that's really not important. All we're gonna be doing is just a real simple outline. So if we click in the top right corner, click on the layers tab, you can see that we've got this layer one, which is our arm layer. We're just gonna click that, click rename, and just change that to arm. Again, this is good housekeeping and it's gonna mean that you can keep all your layers, especially if you've got a really complicated piece in order and you'll be able to find things a lot faster and a lot quicker. Uh, click the little end button. At the top, we've got opacity. We're just gonna drop that down just so it's a little bit more transparent so that when we're doing these lines in a second, we'll be able to see exactly where we're putting those. So I've got that down to about 54%. Anywhere around there is probably about right. You just wanna knock it back so it's just not as strong. Back on the layers tab, we're gonna click the little plus icon. That's gonna give us a new layer. This is gonna be uh, like the black outline layer for the, um, for the template. So we're just gonna click that, rename, just name that outline. So we're gonna go and click the brush icon. We're gonna click inking, and then we're gonna click the technical pen. In the top right corner, we're gonna change the color to black. Make sure we're back on the brush layer. On the resize, we're just gonna make that as big as we can, 100%. I'm just gonna zoom straight the way down into these fingers. Now literally all we're gonna do is just do a really simple outline around all of the hands. So we're not looking for detail, we're just looking for the size and the shape more than anything. Uh, so I'm gonna start down here. Make that just a little bit smaller. So I'm dropping this down to about 
which depending on the pressure is going to give me a nice sort of solid line again i'm not looking for anything special i'm just tracing this outline just so that we've got a nice solid flat line to work up once we've got this uh, got this template So again, I'm not looking for details in the sense of like fingernails or creases in the knuckles. It's literally just for me. I just want a real simple black solid outline that's just going to give me the shape of an arm or a leg. Or as we move forward, we're going to do the chest. Um, and what that allows me to do is just to visualize the shape that I've got, the space what's gonna work, what elements that I, should I add in the design process, what bit should I take away, um, and then just size and scale. So now we've got, a hop, got the hand in, just gonna pinch that out, and then we're just gonna blast over the arm. Now I'm using the technical pen, obviously you can use any pen you want. For me, it's just about having a nice, solid, consistent outline um, that's got a fairly decent weight to it. You don't want anything that's too fine. Um, and at the same time, you don't want anything that's too thick. Uh, it just needs to be very clear and very solid. So at this point, all we've got is a solid outline. So if we just hide the arm layer, you can see that that's all we've got. We go back into the layers. At the bottom, you've got background color. If we click that off, you can see that we've literally just got an outline. So at the moment, this is gonna be no good because if we start putting designs and stuff underneath this layer, all we're gonna get is just this outline around it, which will work for some people, but for me, I like to block out those areas. So we're gonna click the new, new layer button, that's gonna drop us a layer three on top of everything. We're just gonna rename that. Background. On the layers, we're gonna click and hold until it starts floating around. And we're just gonna drop that underneath the outline layer. On the brush tool, we're gonna to go to airbrushing, we're gonna to go to medium brush, and we're gonna change the color to white. So now what we're trying to do is we're gonna try and block out all of the background everything but the space that's inside the arm so i'm going to very quickly blast this out and get fairly close to my outline with this slightly large brush just so i can block all this space out and just make sure that it's really nice and solid and i'm going to drop the brush size down to sort of that was two percent and that way it's just gonna allow me just to get in nice and uh, nice and tight to all these black lines. Now because our layer's underneath, everything we put on now is gonna sit underneath this black line. So I wanna be hitting this black line, ideally not going on the other side of it, uh, but again, that's not the end of the world. Like there, where I've just gone over the line because we can just drop back with the eraser uh, and we can just take those little bits away. Just move in straight away up this line, getting it nice and solid against that black line. Again, try not to go on the inside of the line, but it's really not the end of the world. Um, it's the great thing with Procreate and working on an iPad. You can just go back and just edit, undo, or you can just get the eraser tool and just take those few little bits away. fingers are going to be the most tricky bit just because you've got that tight space but with the airbrushing on three percent it seems to be a pretty good size for me to get in there uh, like i say all these lines are getting dropped underneath that black line so it's giving us that real nice crisp crisp edge that crisp black on white vibe that we're looking for now that i've got that little bit of a white box i can just go a little bit a little bit faster and a little bit looser just to fill in the rest of these spaces. So once we fold all that in, we're just gonna cl click on the eraser tool, click it again to bring up the brushes, go onto the medium brush so we've got that nice sort of solid edge. Make sure that we're down to about 2% and we'll just take away just those few little bits that we had just overlapping over the lines, just so we've got that nice, crisp, solid outline. A little bit down there. 
Beautiful. So now if we go back into the layers, background color, reselect that. Now it looks like everything's white, but we know that underneath there, all we've got now is just the, uh, the cutout of the black and we've got that outline. So if we click on the outline layer at the top, I'm gonna to click that again. It's gonna bring up these options on the left-hand side. Where it says merge down, that's literally gonna merge it down to the layer underneath. We click that. And now if we take off the background layer, you can see we've now got one layer, which is big block of white, a nice neat black outline of an arm and a big cutout area there. So if I drop in just a real simple photo of a rose, you can see at the moment that's inserted it on the top. If I drop that down underneath what is now called the background layer, you can see how that rose now sits underneath a little gap and that way we can resize elements and get them to sit exactly where we want them to sit where we want them to sit what size and you can start sort of putting a composition together for a client's arm quickly and efficiently in the shape and it's going to help you to put that composition together and help you to visualize the space help your client to visualize the space um, and it's just gonna make your life that little bit easier, a little bit faster, a little bit more productive. If you wanna see what the wrap is gonna be like, if you click the end tool on the background, just drop the opacity down slightly, and you'll start to see a few little bits that are tipping out of the edge, ed edge of the outline, uh, and they're the bits that are gonna start wrapping around the arm. Um, again, for me, this is a really useful tool to show my clients. Um, it helps them see what I've got in my head, helps me understand what they've got in their head, and we can start throwing some ideas together, resizing, and get the piece exactly how the client wants it. Right, so the next one we're gonna do, we're gonna do a really simple chest outline. It's gonna be exactly the same as the arm. We're just gonna use uh, a chest image as opposed to an arm image. An arm Im image. An arm image. Instead of using an arm. So again, we're on an A4 canvas. We're just gonna rotate this so we've got it landscape as opposed to portrait mainly because the chest is going to be wider than the arm, how the, how the arm was longer. Um, it's going to get us the biggest sort of area to work with once we've got the template created. So we're going to go in the top left corner and click the spanner icon. We're going to go insert photo. Again, I've got these in a folder. Um, just go on Google, search for chest photography. Uh, you can use anything you want. It doesn't have to be good or high resolution. Uh, it's just enough that you can get the shape uh, to create the template. So we're going to drop this in. I'm going to click on this top right hanger. We're going to pull that to drag it out as big as we can on the A4 sheet. Uh, that way we're going to get the most out of this template. So we're going to click on the layers tool in the top right corner. We're going to click on the name of the layer. Click rename. Rename this as chest. Click on the N. We're going to drop the opacity down to about 50%. Again, that's going to allow us just to get that line over the top without getting too confused with what's going on. It shouldn't be the end of the world, but it just makes your life that little bit easier. While we're still in the layers tab, we're going to click the plus icon. It's going to drop us a layer two above the chest. Going to click that, click rename. We're going to rename that outline. Click the brush icon, go to inking, go down to technical pen. Click the top color picker, make sure that we're on black. On the size tool, we're going to make sure that we're on about 25%. Uh, and then we're just going to do this really simple outline. So I'm going to start down the bottom and I'll start pulling a line up. Again, we're not looking for anything in the way of details. We're literally just looking for shape. Just so that we've got something to work off when, we, uh, when we're putting a design together for a client. So I am going to add in a little bit of the arms, mainly just so it gives everything sort of place and purpose. Uh, and it's going to allow your client to see exactly what you're trying to show them without it just being some strange shapes. I'm gonna add a little bit of the neck in. Sometimes you're gonna want those lines and those uh, those little reference marks just to allow you to uh, to really get to grips with where you're placing stuff and where they're aiming and, uh, and the size and how the composition is gonna work. But again, we're not looking for anything too over the top. And that's pretty much all I'm gonna need. So I'm just gonna go back onto the layers, and just unselect the, uh, the chest layer, and then we can see exactly what we've got. 
So there's a few little gaps in the lines. I just want to punch in just so that I can uh, join those gaps up. Because obviously once we've got the white outline, we're going to want these lines to be nice and solid. And we're not going to want any, uh, any gaps. Just so we've got a nice solid outline. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to click on the layers tab. I'm going to click the background. Again, you can see straight away that all we've got is this outline, but we're going to need the white background. So we've got that blocked out area. So when we start putting designs on, it's just going to allow us to cut that, that design and that shape exactly to the chest outline. Um, and it's going to mean we can just work with that a lot easier. It's almost going to give us a masked layer. So on the layers tab, we're going to click the little plus icon. That's going to drop a third layer above everything. We're going to click that, click rename. So we're going to rename that background. Click on the brush tool, airbrushing, medium brush, because we're going to want a fairly solid edge. Color picker, change that to white. Just have a little check for the size. We're going to bump them up to about 10%, just so we can, again, block out the big sort of areas and get as close as we can to that line. And then we'll go back in with a slightly smaller brush to uh, just to get really close up to that line and just fill in all the little gaps. So I'm going to drop that down to about sort of 3%. It should get us to a point where we can get that really nice and tight to the line. So at the moment I've left this layer above the outline. So you can see at the moment it's very confusing because all the white that I'm putting is going over the top. If I click on the layers tab, click the background and hold it, drop that down underneath, you can see straight away that all those white outlines now are just underneath and we're just getting that nice sort of solid crisp edge, which is what we're looking for. Again, don't worry if you go over the lines, we'll go back with the eraser at the end and we'll just nip over and just tidy anything up, especially these little bits here, just where the line gets really thin. Instead of me having to change the brush size, We'll just go back in with an eraser and we'll just take away those little edges. Again, you're not trying to make a work of art, you're just trying to make a nice solid template that you can work with. Um, just going to help you with your design process and so it's going to help your clients see what you're trying to show them uh, in the way of composition. So just blast this out nice and quick. Again, not trying to be super neat because we're going to go back in with the eraser just to take away those extra little bits that have nipped over the lines. At the end of the day this is what you're trying to sell to a client this is just for your uh, your personal reference however it will help the client visualize the space a lot clearer than just a flat plan so we'll click the eraser tool make sure our medium brush zoom right in size wise we want to be again about two three percent we'll just go and just nip away the any any of the little edges that have gone any of the little bits of white They've gone over the lines. This isn't massively important. By the time you've got a design on, you're probably not even going to notice these, but for me, it's just nice to have everything neat. And if you're uh, if you're going to use one template for everything, which is what I do, it is worth just taking that little bit of extra time, making sure that it is perfect, especially because you're only going to do it once. So you might as well take that time. So at this point, you can see that we've got just the chest blasted out. The only thing that I'm gonna do slightly differently now is I'm probably gonna block out everything that's underneath the actual pack itself. That way, whenever I'm doing designs, I'm generally gonna be working just across the chest area. So I don't really want the design to drop too much lower. Obviously, this is just personal preference. You can add or change anything you want with these templates. I'm just gonna give you the basics, and then you can add and make them um, to your own personal preference. So I'm gonna change my size back up to about 10%. I'm just going to block out this bottom section just up to the bottom of the packs. Click on the eraser tool. I'm just going to take away the little bits of extra that have dropped onto the arm. So 
that's pretty much how I want my template to be. Obviously, you can do yours any different which way uh, you want to do it, whichever bits you want to block out, whichever bits you want to keep. Um, it's entirely up to you. For me, this is just a basic idea of how to get that nice cut out shape. So if we click on the layers tab again, click background color black up back on, you can see we've got everything there. Let's delete that chest layer. It's going to drop in again a couple of roses just to show you exactly where that's going to sit. So I'm going to drop that rose underneath everything. I'm going to click on the outline layer, go down to merge down, make that one on the rose layer. And I'm just going to resize that to sit sort of over this side so you can see straight away that I'm going to be able to get different elements just to sit exactly where I want them to uh, and it's going to give me a clear sort of visualization as to how that's going to sit on the body. Uh, it's going to make my life easier, it's going to make my client's life easier um, and hopefully it should make you a lot more productive with designing tattoos. There you go guys, that's it. That's exactly how I do my arm templates for those that have been asking. Uh, it's really straightforward, really easy. There's nothing complicated about it. It's just a really simple trick that I do uh, just to help my clients visualize the space. For me, if I've got a client in a consultation or I've got them on site, I will just take a photo of their arm and I'll basically do exactly what I just did there, but with a photo of their arm. And that way you've got that extra level of accuracy because you're designing straight onto their arm. Hopefully this has given you a few little pointers um, and to some of those questions that you guys have been putting in my comments. If it has and you've enjoyed the video, make sure to click the like button. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already and make sure you click the bell icon to get notified of all my latest uploads. Um, with all that being said, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.